Evet. You mustn't trust every uh, communication, especially in your, because I see the BBC and, uh, and in America, <clears throat> they actually distort the information. They talk about how terrible the Muslims suffer, others are suffer without giving any information what this cholera, you can't even imagine. Even an animal have got mercy on uh, babies and the kind of things. These people are worse than animals. But as I understand, from the reports which comes out from the army, the army making big progress every day. The question is, what's going to happen? How long will it take? What's going to happen afterwards? And immediately, the concern is about those that were kidnapped. And the effort, as I understand from the uh, information, they are very, very um, serious discussions are to get the kidnapper, the kidnap people, especially to start with children. And the children should be released. And, uh, and obviously there is going to be a price for it, a deal. And of course, you must understand the pressure from the families that have got their dear ones who are uh, kidnapping, kidnapped. And they want to see their uh, children uh, and people back. On the other end, the government and more and more the army, and they have to think, yes, they can release, but the question, what is the price? Originally, they were talking that they wanted there are about 6,000 uh, uh, Palestinians in prison here. And there are about 340 Israelis in prison in uh, Gaza. And they want to say, they say, we will release ours, release the 6,000 uh, Palestinians, which of course, most of them who are in prison here are the potential murderers. So it's not a simple matter. So there is a lot of uh, discussions. There is also uh, America tries to to pressurize, but so far there is something that I can see. As I, as I mentioned, I think last week, this war brought at the moment a tremendous unity among the people here, which was terrible before the war. And probably the reason why the Hamas, now it's actually started already another series from the, from the north, the Syrian, Lebanon and so on, because they, worked it out that there is a split in society and therefore they thought that they can launch the attack and so on. But to what I can see, thank God that the people get to, got together at least at the moment. Unfortunately, the price for this is 
terrible. 1400. 1400. Mi se? 1400 uh, people were killed. And uh, I don't know, a couple of thousands injured. And of course, the situation generally uh, economically is being hurt because the business and so on. There are a lot of problems, but what can you, what can you do? Nobody was, nobody wanted to this to happen. It happened and we have to deal with it. But there is a lot of strong motivation, especially in the young uh, soldiers and the, the, the Tsar, the army is strong to continue to the end until we finish off them uh, completely. Whether they will be able to do it or the, whether we have to pray and uh, ask God to have mercy on us and especially on those that are involved in the, the soldiers. And of course, there are some, and there are still uh, rackets. Now, I just heard the latest uh, was in Tel Aviv, a rocket, and uh, one person was injured. Uh, two right, one uh, a little bit more uh, serious, but I say it's coming better. So it is it is a difficult situation, but we must be together. We, we must not lose hope and pray because we are believers. And uh, this is what I can say. We are, the spirit is strong in spite of. Well, how do you feel, Felicia? What you feeling? It's actually, can you hear me this time? Because last yeah. week, my, yeah. So, um, yeah, at least Baruch Hashem Ba'as has been relatively, relatively quiet. It feels very much like COVID, like everybody's just existing, You're staying as quiet as you can and listening to the news as much as you can. Of course, we're praying for these um, plans of these to go through, but it's very scary. I mean, I just heard now that they want to let the babies out first in uh, for for the children, the, the Arab children. The Arab children are, are killers. Yeah. They're not uh, nine months old and two years old. They are 17 and 18 and 19 year olds. That's very scary. I wouldn't be in their, in their position for nothing. There is a problem. The problem, they actually, this, the, the terrorists, they are brought up to terrorize and to kill Jews from childhood. This is what they are. But we cannot uh, lose faith and uh, we have to do what we have to do. Because Bohu should help us, and uh, and you should also be. A, you also need the, in uh, South Africa. Understand was also a big uh, demonstration to support uh, to support the Hamas and uh, look. And Jews are not uh, not beloved by others. This is what we read. Uh, we read in the parasha that uh, Ishmael, the brother of uh, Yitzchak, he was he would be a pere adam, a wild 
a world man, a world uh, person. And, uh, he is the, and then, of course, we had Asa, the others. But look at the positive side. From all these nations of the thousands of years, the only nation is around we, the Jews. We don't have the ancient, ancient uh, Romans or Greeks or whatever, all that. It's different. So we must pray and hope. Now we'll start. There are certain things that I left, uh, which I mentioned, uh, because we spoke last week just to uh, to remind you, we spoke last week about machloikes l'shem shamayim or shelo l'shem shamayim, dispute, if there is a dispute for good reason, that like Bet Shammai, like Shammai and Hillel, that are disagreement, but this is Machloki Lashem Shamayim, they want to find the truth. And this is something that remains forever. We are still, we still learn Bet Shammai and Bet Hillel, although the law was decided like Bet Hillel, like the, they took the lenient opinion, but still, Bet Shammai is not completely out because what they said is worthwhile. And as I mentioned, it said in the holy books that the law, the law that was established like Bet for this world in the time that we are, that we are not able to go with the opinion of Bet Shammai, which is the most stringent, but when time of Mashiach will come, we will be in higher degree of spirituality, then the Allah will be like Bet Shammai, it says. And so Shem Shammai means that, unfortunately we will have uh, in, in uh, I mean, Jews are very, uh, what do you say? We've got our minds, We everybody's got a mind, everybody. <clears throat> there is a special word, uh, the very opinionated. Everybody got an opinion, which is good, but depends if it is the Shem Shemayim because people are just arguing really to find the truth. Or there is other motives which can be all kinds of things. And this was the machloket of, uh, of Korach and his the group when they argued with the Moshe Rabbeinu. This was not Lashem Shemaim. They had their motives. Korach wanted to become the leader, he wanted to have his honor, and, uh, and so forth. So, if we are, if we are having arguments on the issues, we must see to it, the argument should be on a pure basis to try to find out what is the truth, not to have other uh, reasons, which then it becomes a lot of Shem Shemayim. Um, okay, this is, uh, I think, sum up the, the mission of the last week. So nothing wrong to argue. Argue if you are really believe to look for the truth, you mustn't just say, okay, I accept, I accept, I accept. I must argue. But you must sure, be sure 
where the arguments stem from. Does it come from really to look for the truth? Or uh, you, you want to be shown that you are uh, a great guy, uh, you want to run down the others and so on. This is, of course, this is not acceptable. Now we go to the next Mishnah, chapter five, Mishnah 18, in some prints is Mishnah 21. The Mishnah says like this, Kol amzaket arabim, en chet ba'al yado. Whoever makes a multitude meritorious, 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 no sin shall come through him. In other words, if somebody is instrumental, that some people makes makes them to be better, to do good things, then he will not fall into. Um, having a sin. But a person that he brings people to sin, will not be given the means or the opportunity to achieve repentance, to do tshuva. And now there are two examples. It's not just talking in theory, but also they bring examples. Moshe Zaha Vizikat Arabim, Zikrut Arabim Kriyabo. Moshe Rabbeinu attained virtue and brought the multitude to virtue. So the merit of the multitude is referred to him. As it is stated, he affected the righteousness of the of the Lord of Hashem and his ordinance with Israel. Which means, and we'll discuss it a little bit more in detail, that if he was instrumental, that other people do good things. So what the other people do also comes to his credit. On the other hand, the country, Yerobam ben Avat, Chata v'echtit arabim. Yerobam ben Avat, he, Yerobam the son of Navat, sinned and brought the multitude to sin. So the iniquity of the multitude is referred to him as it's stated for the sins of Jeroboam which he sinned, he sinned and made Israel sin. For that he was punished. Again in the same uh, way what the other sin now, if he was instrumental to direct people to sin, the sins of the other person, people become into his debit. Not only that he is a sinner, but he is blamed for the sins of others. When we say that uh, the, the first part, the positive side, a person that he leads people to do good things, he will not sin. And there are a couple of ideas here. And one of them is uh, interesting. It's 
it's not uh, as some of the commentary makes. It's not, it's not not going to happen that he made other people to do well, and they will uh, get the reward and be let's say after death when they pass to another world they will be in Gan Eden, and he. If he will sin, obviously, he won't get there. So therefore, there is kind of a protection that if he was instrumental in others to do well, uh, well, that he should not sin. We, philosophically, we have to discuss, and I don't think we'll be able to discuss it today, because it's uh, philosophically, you say, what uh, what about freedom of choice? What does it mean if he led people to do things? Does it mean to say that it becomes like an angel and he has got uh, any evil uh, inclination not to see. You understand my question? So where is the bhira? Where is the freedom of choice? There is, we say, that there are people uh, which uh, angels or whatever, they haven't got freedom of choice. But if we are human beings, We've got a freedom of choice. So it could be either the Mishnah means, you know, there is, you can sin, there are two kinds of sin. You can sin intentionally, you have intention to sin, and can be you sin unintentionally. It just happened and you didn't actually meant to do that. If you, uh, let's say, light a cigarette on Shabbos, you light a cigarette intentionally, you're going to do it. But what happened is, by mistake, you uh, switched on the light. You just was uh, there, you didn't notice that there is uh, uh, there to, and you just with your hand. This is, con this is called shogeg, unintentional, which is also unintentional to the sin. But obviously, there, there is no punishment of its magnitude. Uh, we discussed, for instance, murder. If a person murdered somebody, there is a death penalty. If a person, this is if he did it intentionally. If a person, like the Torah speaks about, somebody uh, chopped a wood in the forest without making proper precaution that nobody will be there and killed, you can't punish him. It didn't uh, mean it was unintentional, but he needs to have an atonement. And there is kind of thing, well, what does he do? And this is where he had to go to the city of shelter, Arya Miklat. So there is something that all, let's say, a person by mistake um, was, uh, as I said, in Shabbos, made a mistake in Shabbos. So when it was Besamikdos, in order to get an atonement, he had to bring a korban, a sacrifice. So it means, means that there is something that you have to, to, uh, Clean, to clean yourself with it. 
So here we can say that if a person is instrumental to making other people to do mitzvahs, to do right things, he will be protected not to break a law unintentionally. So this, you don't, intentionally, this means your own freedom of choice. This, a person, uh, the freedom of choice is not going to be taken away from a person. This is a, a human being. It's only, there is some, uh, we say, again, in messianic time or whatever, but as long as we are a human being in this world, this still is, you've got the freedom of choice. So it can't be that if you do very good things that you need to be rewarded, the freedom of choice is still yours. And we know that this can happen. Uh, here we know we had a tunnel, Elisha ben Abuya. He was a teacher of Rabbi Meir that for whatever reasons he turned sour and he were completely uh, left left uh, his English kite and he uh, became he broke the law and so on. This was his freedom of choice to do it. I don't want to discuss now and uh, there is an old story the Gemara says I did the country but I'm just bringing it as an example so on the on the very uh, one way we have to understand what the mission said and I speak him which means if he was the one instrumental to direct people well, sin won't not come to him. In other words, it will not come to him to do things unintentionally to sin. But this done to say that if you want to intentionally and to break the law, they still have got the freedom of choice. The other uh, way to look at it, that this person, Mezaket Arabim, he won't have to face a trial, which means every one of us have to meet tests. We are tested every day, every minute. We are tested and there are situations which brings us to a test and that we have to make a decision. But uh, in a person, the one that uh, directs people correct, he won't need to have a test. So he won't have any reason, opportunity to sin. And let's take a rough, rough example. Let's say the person can be in a dilemma. He's, he's very poor, he hasn't got money to eat or whatever. And here has got an opportunity to steal something that will make him able to to uh, survive or whatever it is, or to we to do things. It's tested. This is a test, but it could be very well that the person that he is. Um, uh, worth, worth it by directing people to good, he won't have such a test. He won't come to make such a need to, to, to make a decision. He won't be short of 
of food, if you want to So I'm just taking rough, rough uh, examples. The third thing which- We've got about a minute left. Okay, so as I, as I said, we probably will have to go back to this because it's quite important. There are the third thing is that everybody needs God's help. The Yetzirah works on everybody. And God is helping us to overcome it. So somebody that get, uh, is uh, in the David, he gets God help to overcome the, the temptation. Then you will find what is the negative side, the one that, uh, so this Yimir Sashem will live for next week. Arav, you okay. want to, Arav, next week we're going to do 8.30. Okay. Everybody agree? Anybody disagree to 8.30 next week? Anybody? It's fine with me. Other people? Anybody? Is that just for, Sammy, is this just for one week or in future? In future. No. Oh. Okay. In future, next week will be 8.30. Any, any objection? No. No objection. No yes. objection. Okay. Yes. Let me pass. Next week, 8.30. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Same okay. about Tuesday, uh, Thursday, still 8.30. 8.30. 8.30. 8.30. Yeah. 8.30. 8.30. No, but Thursday. Thursday. 8.30. Thursday is 8.30. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.